Hi friends, hope you're doing well today. Um, this video is gonna be kind of a challenge video. I think it will be very challenging in some ways. Um, I'm going to try to do a full face of makeup using only the applicators that certain products come with, okay? I'm not bringing in my own sponges or brushes. If there is something in the product, like hiding down underneath, something like this, you know, I'm just using this kind of thing. We might find that some products contain very, very good applicators and some maybe are gonna be darn near impossible. And where this whole idea came from, as I was editing my last video, I was pointing out how the Butter Bronzer has this thing underneath. I haven't even used it. This is going to be like some of these I've never used. And I thought, to be fair, we're going to not even practice with them and just see if they work. But this is what is underneath a butter bronzer. And it's like a sponge, basically. Who is using this to apply their bronzer? I want to know. So as I'm pointing this out in my last video, I'm thinking, what if I tried to do a full face just using the things that makeup comes with? And we'll see maybe if there's any tips and tricks. We'll see if there are situations where you could skip, you know, buying or using another separate brush or applicator and actually get away with what the product comes with. Or I think maybe we might find some total flops here. <laughs> but you guys know I like to go into this stuff with a positive attitude, a hopeful attitude. So that's what we're going to do today. I have already moisturized and gotten everything prepped. And we're going to begin with foundation. And one of my foundations that comes with an applicator is this CoverGirl Plus Olay Simply Ageless Foundation. And it's got uh, titanium titanium dioxide sunscreen, hyaluronic complex, and vitamin C. This says it's an improved formula, so this is a more recent um, version of this product. And I have it in classic beige. Supposedly it's instant wrinkle defying, and it has SPF 28. So in this product, you twist off the top, and you've got this swirled compact here. It's been a little while since I've used this, but I have used it before. But what I have not used is the little sponge that's here in the cap. So let's try it with this foundation and just see how it goes. And I'm also going to try to be kind of minimal about using my fingers for this video. Like I really just want to see how do these applicators do. Um, so I'm going to do kind of a combination of pressing it in slash swiping it on. I think I'm going to try to do like half my face first and we can sort of figure out how good the coverage is in comparison to the other side of my face but it seems fairly matte. And I don't know that we're gonna go beyond a medium coverage with this because I am still seeing like some freckles, but I am definitely taking care of some redness, that's for sure. And I'm just evening out my skin tone overall. You can see the product has like these swirls of I don't know, I guess that's some of the skincare benefits that are included in this product. Let me know if you're an avid user of this and what you use to apply it with. I guess I've used a brush in the past, but Here's my first go round with the sponge. I'm building it a little bit. Gonna build it a little bit around my redness and a little bit more around the under eye area. Kind of press it in. This sponge is actually pretty soft. Um, it's pretty flexible too. So here's one half of the face with the product applied and here's the other. I'd call that a solid medium coverage. So let's finish up over here, shall we? Looking through my collection, I really don't have a lot of different foundations that come with some sort of applicator, but let me know in the comments, like, what are some things that you've seen that try to come with something you're supposed to use to apply them with. I know CoverGirl has some other cream ones. I remember one of the first foundations I ever used was, gosh, was it called Ultimate something? It was in a little black rectangular compact and it was just a cream to powder foundation and you just put it on with the sponge and I'm certain I used that sponge back in the day. And then they have something called like Aqua Smooth and I've used that as well. I would say, yeah, my skin does look kind of matte. It looks a little cakey around certain areas actually, which surprises me because I thought like this feels like kind of a thin, very creamy, semi-hydrating type of foundation, but yet around my brows it looks a little dry and kind of on my nose as well, just a little bit cakey looking. Maybe, you know, with a dampened beauty blender or something like that, you could have 
really worked it in and maybe gotten a little better finish, who knows. Next up we're gonna do concealer and here's a product I have that comes with an applicator. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Cushion. It says color corrector for dark circles. And this is actually kind of a neat product. It, you twist off the top, you've got this, which I have used before, and then you pull up this stopper thingamajig and here's our cushion. So I kind of wrap this little spongy thing, which feels like a very dense kind of soft sponge. Like you got to look real closely to even see any holes in that sponge. And you're going to press it down in your cushion. You can tell that you've picked up some product and then dab it on the skin. And it is brightening. It looks like a really, really light peach, light beige shade on the skin. Um, I would say the peach pigment in this is not super strong, but it is nicely brightening. And the consistency of the product is like liquid, basically. The product is being held within this sponge. You're picking it up here and it's just super duper thin. So it's maybe not all the coverage I would really want to totally counteract under eye darkness, but it is giving me some brightening. As far as the experience putting it on with this sponge. I would really prefer to go in with a brush right about now. Um, getting around my inner corner is a little bit of a hassle, but as far as larger surface area places like the tops of my cheeks where I'm also getting some of this, it's not so bad. It's kind of pressing it in, blotting it on. I never really think of these peachy products as being super good for correcting redness, so fortunately I went around most of my redness with the foundation, but I think I will take a little bit of this in other zones where I'd like to brighten, like down the nose, center of the brow, forehead area. Ugh, I may have just caked up an already kind of cakey looking area though. <laughs> it's interesting that these products are looking cakey because they're really, really thin. The foundation was pretty thin for being a cream. This is about as thin as it gets. It's basically liquid, but maybe it's just that these applicators aren't working it in the way a brush would or a dampened sponge would. But here we go. I think we're going to stop there with the product application to prevent any more cakiness. Now for powder. Here's something where I think a lot of people swear by this actually. The Laura Mercier Loose Powder and the Puff. If you watch like Makeup by Mario's makeup tips, he's always using something like this. So I'm going to dump a little bit of the powder here into the cap, pick up some of the powder and then tap it off and then basically roll and press it into the skin. And I'll use that to set basically the center of the face and under eye area. This may be something I wanna use more because that actually looks really nice. I mean, keep in mind, this wasn't the greatest coverage under eye situation here with that corrector that I used but going over it with this powder, it does have a nice smooth and actually not super cakey appearance. Just kind of pressing and rolling on the skin. Take it around the T-zone and hopefully help our staying power. I just feel like I always go for my e.l.f. small tapered brush whenever I'm pulling out this powder, but this really is a nice strategy. The puff is certainly nice and soft, it's very flexible, um, and you're getting that nice kind of pressing motion into the skin. I think so long as you don't dump too much product on and you're not trying to like cake on a whole lot at once, it can actually work really well. I'd say we're doing okay so far, um, but here's what I'm really, really nervous about. The Butter Bronzer's Little Sponge. I mean, it's like actually a sponge that you're going to put into this bronzer and I don't know how we're actually going to blend this out. This is a pretty deep shade. This is the color Endless Summer, and I guess I'm just going to pick some up. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that just scares me in itself. Uh, maybe I can tap a little on my hand. Oh dear. Um, use the other side. Quickly flip to the other side. Will this blend? Oh my gosh. Oh, heaven help me. How? I, like, what did, oh my gosh, there I go again. I, that picks up a ton. Um, I don't know how they expected people to really use this. Physician's Formula does put a brush in some products you're gonna see coming up. Like, they put actually what I think is a pretty promising brush in one of their other things. Like, why wouldn't they just, if they have to put something in, why not just put a brush in there? 
Okay, I feel like I'm getting actually somewhat of a blend. It's hard because I really need to blend, but I don't want to apply so much pressure that I screw up everything underneath. Although I no doubt am trying to get this up into the hairline. Okay, there's the hairline. <laughs> Do I dare? I mean, I, I've got to, right? Pick up a little bit. It's blending, but barely. <laughs> My hand's gonna be sore from the blending after all this. This is how much product I'm getting on here. Like, barely touch it. And then just swipes, quick, short swipes. But let's be honest, I am applying a lot of pressure because there's no other way to make it blend. Would not recommend. Don't try this at home. <laughs> I think that's as much as I can pull off and I don't dare put it anywhere else. Like I'm not gonna lightly try to graze this all over the rest of the face because we know what that's gonna do. Okay, goodbye. Oh boy, blush, blush. We have to do cover girl cheekers here. Now there's a lot of little blush brushes thrown into things. Some worse than others, but I'm gonna use the CoverGirl because my friend David, like, he laughs at me that anytime I open up a CoverGirl blush, I'm always like, make sure to hold that brush in there, that brush that I never use, but I will always keep them in there. But it's this brush. It's blunt cut, it's small, it's pretty scratchy. I'm sure I probably reached for this when I was first starting out with my makeup. It's the kind of brush that really cuts into the product because it, there is literally no taper to this. So any product it picks up is gonna be right at the end and it does make your blush kick up a lot of powder. Okay, let's just try to lightly circular motion. This. this is the Instant Cheekbones, which I love. Um, this is the shade called Sophisticated Sable. So I'm using that middle color. Oh, <laughs> this brush. And this is no offense to anybody who, like, makes little applicators work on a regular basis. I know there are some things where I will gladly use whatever comes in it. You know, there are certain eyeshadow things where I really get use out of the applicators and I'm not a snob to the sponge tip. You get some of Kevin Aquan's beauty books, he will actually advise you to use a sponge tip applicator at times. Whoever is enjoying these methods, making them work, um, that's fine. It's just certain things I'm not used to really pulling in because I do tend to go for a separate brush. All right, we've got on that center shade. Now, of course, we want a little more color, so I'll go to this other one. This is where it gets a little more tricky. That first shade was very forgiving because it was just so light and kind of neutral. This deeper color, you gotta watch it a little bit more. But I'm just trying to stick to the circular motion idea. I think the big thing is this just takes so much more time because nine times out of ten I feel like these applicators are very undersized and much smaller than the average blush brush or whatever you might pull in. So it just takes you so much longer to get product on and get it blended. Then I think we'll go into this highlightery side here. We'll just get some of this going on. I've got another highlighter type product I want to apply to, but in the spirit of using the whole instant cheekbones, we're going to put this on too. Sort of workable for the highlight, actually. That's kind of in the ballpark of a highlighter brush size that I might use. Okay, let some blend up here. Cupid's bow. <laughs> I do have a couple of different products I want to try out here for an all-over glow. I've got this Milani Baked Bronzer in the shade called Glow, and look at what they put in. This, to me, looks kind of promising. There is a little taper, it's pretty wide, and it's got a little fluff going on, so I think I'm going to try some of this. This is just a light, kind of glowy, all-over bronzer, I'd say. And so I'm swiping this on. Just hit the forehead, hit the nose, tops of cheeks. That's not so bad. I mean, it's a little scratchy, but it, it's wide enough to really do some work for you. This put into your CoverGirl blush might actually get the job done a little faster. And then to kind of add a little more highlight here, I've got this Physician's Formula Rose All Day Petal Glow. So this seems almost like an iridescent kind of powder. Sometimes it looks a little bit pinky, sometimes more golden. And look at the brush that comes in here. This is what they need to be putting in their butter bronzer. This is soft. Oh my gosh, it's really soft. Um, it's got a nice cut. It's pretty darn dense. Like, this may be one of the best brushes I've seen included in something like this. So I'm going to graze that over the product. 
tap off the excess. Oh my gosh. It's actually like hugging the cheek. It's really nice and very soft. This is the softest like included brush that I think I've ever felt. Now that I've got way too much glow on my skin, I'm really surprised that they're not sticking that in their butter bronzers though, because that, that would really help. Okay, I'm gonna do a little setting spray. You can see I'm getting down there with my Farsali Rose Gold Mist. Trying to use it up, okie dokie. For brows, I thought it might be fun to grab a brow palette and use all of the applicators included. So I've got this Benefit Browsings Pro Palette in the medium deep shade. And this comes with um, several waxes, a clear wax and two colored tinted waxes and four powders. And then these are the applicators. We've got a double ended angled brush. And then here, just kind of like a rounded tip flat brush, maybe to apply some initial wax if you want to and a teeny tiny spoolie and for me I do think little brow kits that come with applicators I know from using an elf one quite a bit in the past like little angled brushes cheap angled brushes usually do get the job done like here's a situation where you wouldn't have to go buying another brush for me I think I will do like kind of a layer of wax and then some powder to fill in so I'm gonna go to this clear wax and this little brush and just lay that down over the brow. And then this is going to give the powder that I put on a little something to cling to. And I've also used this wax in the center just, you know, to fill in with that. And it's actually very tinted. There's a lot of color in it. And to apply that, I would just use one of the angled brush sides. So I'm all waxed up. Then I'm gonna take one of the angled sides and I think I'll go to this brown right here. And I think powders are a really easy way to first get into filling in your brows if you've never done it before. I think it's the most forgiving way but you do want to have that wax there so the powder has something to cling to. This was the first way I ever filled in my brows, but at first I was doing it without any kind of wax and I don't know how I was expecting it to really last. Okay, that was a really fast fill in and then you can also go through with the spoolie if you want. Looks good to me. Now back to the other side. There's a pretty nice range of deep browns in here too, um, ranging from almost a little bit more taupey looking one um, some have a hint more warmth. Go through with the spoolie again. And I mean, I feel like you're totally equipped here. They've given you enough applicators and they work well. And again, even buying like the little e.l.f. Um, eyebrow wax and powder duo, the tiny applicator they put in there works just fine. So no complaints with that. Next, I am going to put on my eye primer. I'm gonna use some Milani eyeshadow primer and we're about to do a full eye look with just the applicator that comes with a palette. Some palettes do come with really nice brushes or applicators. The first one that comes to mind, probably the best, would be the ABH palettes. They tend to come with a double-ended brush that really does work well. We're talking nice soft bristles, um, usually a side that works as a nice little outer crease brush, and then something that could easily go all over your lid or other little detailed areas. It's the type of thing like if you went through your whole ABH palette, you would want to keep that brush because it's something you can actually use. Um, Milani has put out in their Everyday Eyes palettes, which I'm not sure that they're making anymore, but those contained nice little brushes. But today we are going to use a new Rimmel palette. It's semi-new. I've used it a time or two, but it's the Magnifies Jewel Rocks edition. Yeah, a little bit of color today, and we've got a double-ended sponge tip and brush here. The brush has just a little bit of taper. See, it's just a small, like really small brush that could be somewhat multi-purpose. It's going to have to be multi-purpose purpose for us today. And then the sponge tip is the kind that it's not like an old, old school sponge tip. Think back to like your first ever CoverGirl single shadow and it came with a little spongy tip. This is more like one of those semi rubberized feeling sponge tips, sort of like the texture of that thing that came in the butter bronzer. Like I alluded to before, I think aside from brow products, um, situations where I've most often used the applicator provided has been eye palettes. So I'm confident we can do this. I think the strategy I'm gonna use instead of really attempting to do a super buffed out crease, I mean, we're gonna try to get there eventually, but I'm gonna start with darkness in the outer corner and just 
just go from there. So looking at this palette, I think our darkest shade is this nice matte green. Um, and I think I'll try to take my sponge tip with that. And the product is really just sticking there. It might be because I've applied primer, but this could take forever to apply in that way. I think I'm gonna switch to the brush. Okay, that's a little bit easier. And I'm just gonna get this forest green shade, which is a really nice green. It seems to be pigmented. It just really like, when you use that sponge tip, it just goes shook, just that one spot where you put it. Brush will let me, I think, get some color into my crease here. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get it really, really blended when it's all said and done, but let's just focus on getting it applied for now. Some of these Rimmel palettes, guys, they're not playing. Spice Edition, the Crimson one, that Reloaded one that I just talked about in my favorites video, great everyday palette. The brush is not doing too bad. It's just tiny, so it's taking longer. <laughs> now, in terms of blending, I wonder if I can just use some kind of like, attempt some circular motions here. Try to work that product around a bit more. Dark green, I mean, this is not the easiest shade to blend out. I could have chosen like a brown palette maybe um, of all days. Okay, you see what we're working with here? We're pulling the shadow inward a little bit as we blend it. I'm just focusing small. Like don't think that you're gonna blend all this in one big swipe. Just think like, okay, I'm gonna try to blend this little outer part. So do some circular motions and then, okay, we're gonna come in. We're just gonna try to blend this little part. Just little tiny focused areas at a time. I think it's the way to go. That's not too bad. Okay, now I'm gonna get the brush good and cleaned off. And I think I'll go to this peachy color right here. And maybe, ooh, that picked up a lot. Maybe we can add this over the edge and give the illusion of a really blended look. That looks kind of pretty alongside the green, actually. So over the border. I'm just picturing y'all sitting there, drinking your coffee, having a cocktail, loving life, and just watching me struggle today. Oh man, how I would love to go in with a big, fat blending brush right now. And of course there's not just a plain, white, creamy shade. This is really shimmery over here. Cleaning off my brush, nothing on it. I'm just gonna blend. Okay, this is all right. Blending back and forth, really little motions. Try to get the edge of that peach worked in. And then maybe we'll just take a dab of this goldeny shade and just light swipe. I'm trying not to go in with my fingers either just because I'm really trying to be creative with the brush and work it as far as it will go for me. Alrighty, not too bad. Now let's um, bring in the sponge tip and let's go for something here on the lid. Let's try this second shade here. It looks like a really light yellowish spring green. Oh, holy cow. Holy pigment. And the sponge tip is laying that down like a boss. Yes, that's really cool looking. It's like opaque as opaque can be, my friends. Okay, then maybe around the innermost corner, we go back to this shade that we put under the brow. And then kind of merging, we've got a lot of green happening in here. Actually, we've got this kind of mossy sage green. We've also got this color down here at the end. I wonder if I took some of this with my brush and just kind of went over the border between our matte and our really light shade. That looks pretty decent. Good enough, you know? Uh, now what are we gonna do about underneath the eye? Let's try that same shade and just use the brush. This brush, heck yeah. Okay, that's gonna be narrow enough. If you just kind of swipe it side to side, it's gonna fit right there on my under eye. But maybe we go into the matte green again, just to get that outer corner. I'm pretty proud of this, guys. I mean, I know it's not perfect, but we did not pull in one extra brush or my finger. And you know what I don't have? I do not have any visible fallout either. Okay and the shimmer the rest of the way over. 
pretty good. For the eyeliner today, I'm gonna use this Longwear Gel Eyeliner from Bobbi Brown. This is in the shade Black Ink, and I do have this little itty bitty brush. I think it might have come as a free gift. It's called the Ultra Fine Eyeliner Brush, but it's super duper short, and um, it's got like just a little bit of a rounded tip, but it's very small. It gives me kind of a thick line, but it's not it's not bad, like it's not a problem. I don't really want to take that super far in because I don't want to cover up this really bright, fun lid pop that I've got. I'll keep it to like the outer half. But the reason why I actually purchased this uh, liner not all that long ago was because I saw the um, Bobbi Brown makeup artist that was using it. She was tight lining with it. It's like taking a little bit of product and coming up in here. So I'm gonna do that too. Give me maybe a, the look of a little thicker lash line perhaps. Next up we curl the lashes. And from here on out guys, it's like everything has an applicator that you normally would use with the product, like a mascara wand. Um, so this is my Milani the Violet One Primer. Felt like using some primer today, so I'll pop that on first. And then freshly curl this side. I'm gonna let that dry and then I wanna try my Falsies Lash Lift over the top. I don't think I've paired this with the Milani yet and I wanna see how that goes. For my lips, I'm just gonna use something that comes with an applicator in it. Nothing really different than what the average person would use, but I've got this ColourPop Luxe Velvet Lipstick Duo in the shade called Lofty Goals. Uh, it's got a couple of shades in here. One's a little more orangey, one kind of a murky reddish shade, I think. Mm. I think I'll try this one. The one called Puddin'. It's got a little more warmth to it, it looks like. Let's try it on. It's very moussey. I do like the applicator with this. It's got a nice flatness to it that lets you throw on the product really quick, but yet you can be very precise with it. Coming off a little brighter than I expected. It looks a little brighter on camera than it does in person, actually. I haven't really played with these much, but I'm wondering, like, is this gonna set? A little more orangey than I was expecting. Maybe we throw on a little bit of the other shade. It's called Air Kiss. Just a little bit of that. I don't know. That one still has some brightness to it. Don't you think when the tube is a little frosted, it makes everything look slightly more dull than it's actually going to be? Now let's put our top coat of mascara on. See how this does. I like the Milani. I like the Falsies Lash Lift. We'll see how they do together. Mm, pretty dramatic. The lashes are looking like, I don't know, there's an odd thickness to them, but I think I'm not seeing the look of quite as many lashes as I would if I only used this. Actually, I'm getting a little more separation on this side. I think this is the side I applied less primer to. Maybe less is more with the primer. Final thing I would do here is put on a little more blush. Um, I combine these two shades. Just <laughs> swirl on with my little guy here. Just need a little more color to keep up with the rest. Okay, got the hair down. Um, here's the finished look, you guys. The recap, the takeaway. Um, we certainly made the foundation work, I thought. I didn't love the look of it texture-wise all over my face, although, you know, the nice, flat, smooth parts were fine, but areas where I had a little dryness, I felt like using the provided sponge just didn't do me any favors. It may have laid down a little more product than necessary, thus making it look a bit more cakey there. Same with the concealer, too, actually, which is a very thin, product, that wet and wild cushion. Those are situations where I think using a brush that you really love or using a damp sponge could have been maybe the answer and could have helped me out. I like the Laura Mercier puff. I want to use that more. Good lord, the butter bronzer, that's the most like bogus, what the heck were they thinking type of applicator that was included. That was really hard. CoverGirl, I mean, they have been putting the same brush in these compacts for probably long before I started doing makeup and I don't know if they're going to change anytime soon. It's doable, you know, it's workable. I don't think it makes these blushes look as good as if I just pulled in my e.l.f. blush brush. You know, it's a three dollar blush brush, but I'm realizing I think it's making the most of a lot of different blushes that I use. A couple other face things we played with. Um, Milani has a decent brush in here. It's a little bit scratchy, but a really nice size and definitely a super nice brush in this Physician's Formula Rosé All Day. That is soft, that is tapered, 
awkward, it is dense, they could be selling this thing on its own. Brow products that have included applicators are definitely usable. I mean, I don't think I've met a small angled brush that I couldn't make work for myself. And this palette, I think they give you plenty of applicators for the different things you might use, and they really work totally fine. This Rimmel palette, I mean, I went for the dark matte forest green, you guys, like, no fear here. I felt like I got a good look out of this. I might assume I used brushes actually to look up close. I think if you're in situations like this where you're using, you know, a very small included brush and a sponge tip applicator, let's say, try to work in really small areas. Don't think about blending in the same capacity you would with a big old crease brush where you're just like back forth, back forth. Here you really have to think about, okay, let me blend this small area, then let me move over to this little area and just do a very small amount at a time and work in circular motions and then it's really the same concept that you would use with larger brushes. It's capable of buffing, it's just a heck of a lot smaller than what you're used to. And then also going over a darker shade with another shade up. This palette was tricky because the color spectrum is all over the place. We got a splash of blue, we got some green, we got some peach, we got some golds in here. And it doesn't give you the easy gradient that some palettes might give. I'm thinking of the Urban Decay Naked Honey. That one has very small small steps between shades. So you could put one down, put one down that's very similar to that, and just with the simple layering of a few shades, you can look blended. Here, it's a little trickier when you've gotta go from this color family to that one, but I think we made it go. And then sponge tip for all over the lid shades. Did we all learn a lesson here? This shade right here applied so nice and opaque with the sponge tip. And then under the eye, the little brush perfect size. So a very workable applicator there in the Rimmel palette, I gotta say. And we're talking like six bucks for one of these palettes. That's amazing. Our mascara and our lips didn't have to really do anything different than what we would normally do, let's face it. If you find yourself in a position to use the little Bobbi Brown mini eyeliner brush, I think that's actually a really good brush. But um, let me know what you thought of this challenge. Let me know if you decide to try it for yourself or if you are a regular user of the applicators that are included. In a lot of cases, it may just be something Thing you'd have to get used to. You know, it takes a little extra time if your applicator is extra small. Um, I think you have to really play with the pressure you apply because you may have to work harder to blend and as a result you don't want to mess up your foundation underneath. Um, but it can be done. It can be done. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!